to all our speakers, we now have time for, for, for questions. Um, I have seen uh, in the in the Q and A box we have a question for for Sonia um, from Shaheen that uh, we are interested in Hati Heart, uh, the app of the ID model. Do you think that it can be expanded to make inclusive business growth in Bangladesh? What are the challenges that can be addressed to make a business model? Thank you, Sholan. Uh, thank you, um, Shaheen. That's a very good question. So one of the things that the Hatehat Hat team with Sholan and Parvez, we did, we, what we uh, discovered that while our app works, the success depends on people downloading the app and using it. And that is a big challenge in Bangladesh. So that is why uh, we, we are partnering with the biggest MFS, mobile financial service provider in Bangladesh. And then we want this app to be an in-app inside that because they have, uh, I think they have 30 million users on their app. So it's very important for us to follow the lead with people downloading an app and then see a tile inside because none of us in this room even or in the Zoom room, we don't like to download new apps on our phone. We'd rather have a super app that takes us to the other app. So that's what we're positioning Hate Hate app in is to be, be inside a super app so that people who go into the super app automatically come here. So I am betting on Hate Hate. I know uh, Parvez and, and Sholana that we, we are really betting that this is going to be a success. And uh, this is the year we want to uh, see results. So yes, Shaheen, stay tuned. We are very, very passionate about driving momentum here. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Yes, yeah, we are uh, working together and really got the energy and the passion here to make it work uh, for the people in Bangladesh and hope for all the people uh, in the marginalized society in the world. And uh, also this, I, I remember in, 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 in Pina's talk, and she has mentioned Facebook, like Facebook in the developing countries, Facebook has an advantage that it has uh, many of the poor people in, in the marginalized society has a Facebook account while does not have a, a bank account. So this is also something that this happy heart also we aim to is all the poor people when they use it uh, and then gradually we introduce a lot of public uh, uh, services or other services kind of provision through this uh, uh, super app and, uh, and leads them to you know, uh, provide other public services, financial services, education services from this gateway uh, to, to the people in the, uh, uh, in the marginalized society. Um, so, uh, and also, uh, um, I think there is a question for Pina too, uh, from Ms. Yang Qing. Uh, and uh, uh, her question is about uh, the data. In terms of data generated from platforms, who has the ownership of this data? The platform or individuals who submit the uh, information? A number of countries talk about data sovereignty. Will it have any implications for the current data business model? Yeah, so this is a great question and it very much is up in the air with regulators trying to figure out what to do about data rights and data ownership. And it's also important to understand that data ownership and data usage are not the same thing. So I might, I might own the data, but the platform could use the data. And uh, even in cases where the platforms don't see individuals data. So for example, in the case of NHS, they don't know, you know if somebody has diabetes or et cetera, they just know the profile of the person, but the metadata almost always is being used. And so I think that's really what, what makes them so powerful. Thank you, thank you, Pina. And uh, we have also one question, I think it's to, to, to Alex. Um, given the enabling factors of national broadband infrastructure mentioned in the morning and the electricity demand implications of se uh, cellular mobile network use, are there leapfrog solutions on the horizon to enable equitable and sustainable connectivity in no resource settings? Alex. Yes, uh, thank you for the question. It's a, it's a very good question. <laughs> Um, you know, I, first of all, I want to say I, I didn't want to leave this talk with uh, just a negative uh, perspective. The point here really was that, you know, all these design, um, design questions could be done much earlier and, and science can help 
as an early warning so you can start building towards that and you don't have to wait until you have this competition for resources and you will have that competition for resources especially in the poorer countries i mean there was a question here on, on a bitcoin too that's related to this question you have some places like cambodia where you know bitcoin has had for a while uh, had some uh, serious uh, um, implications for electricity demand right i mean that the, the systems are not terribly terribly stable there there's resource questions but of course the mobile uh, network system and especially once we go to 5g 5g you know per data may be way way more efficient just like all this computing at a, at a higher level is more efficient per data but it's not in overall terms uh, you know we had, we've had similar situations in, in other cases so i i think you cannot square uh, that mobile question and i think it would be wrong it's a cost benefit uh, decision here i'm just saying that you know, even in small online platforms, like like the ones you know you 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 talk about, where you know where you target poorer segments of the, of the population, you could build in something uh, like this that gives information on you know did you save some energy or emissions? Maybe you can even at some point sell it. You know, there are markets for this. This this this, this is what I meant. I I would turn it around and say you know maybe there's not a normal leapfrog opportunity. But you can make a business opportunity out of it. I, I think this innovation is the limit is the sky. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Alex. Yeah, I, I uh, really uh, um, uh, think what you have done is a very important part. This is this early alert, you know, uh, to the policymakers and also to the scientific and the whole society to to build this factor in our efforts building back a, a better world post pandemic. That's exactly what a science policy interface, this early alert is what, you know, the, the, the interface very, very much needed. And I'm confident why. I think, I, I, I think like Elon Musk, I'm kind of, you know, uh, uh, I, I, uh, I really think he has done something as an example, like sending a car to the space, sending people to the Mars. Uh, this was very costly, only NASA type of, you know, large country state capacity can do. And he turned it into commercially affordable. So this is innovation. And I believe one day this digital technology in terms of kind of eff energy efficient digital technology will, will come one day. Uh, through all this innovation in kind of, you know, uh, efforts. So that's why I hold the hope here. But I think the early alert is very important uh, to make sure we build this, uh, embed this in our efforts, uh, um, uh, building the future society. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks to, to Sonia and the Pina uh, too uh, for all, all your excellent contribution and also insightful uh, responses to the questions and your, in, your, in your talks.